an anim crafting game with dungeons, progressions, and full skill trees, where you can also catch monsters and use them to automate your factories. Craftopia in 2021. Should you play it? What's up guys, Marty here, and today we're looking at another crafting game. I saw people reviewing this last year when it came out, I think it was like October, but I heard it was very unfinished, so I wanted to give it a little bit more time in the oven. It's been around six months now, so I wanted to give it a go and let you guys know an overview of the game, my thoughts, whether it's you know worth your time right now, whether you should wait for the full release, or just to totally avoid this game. It feels like lately I'm just playing early access games so you guys don't have to, and I'm happy with that. I enjoy trying these out. I create videos on fantasy, survival and strategy games. If you're into that sort of thing, subscribe to the channel to see more. And as always, I'll timestamp the video in case you want to jump around to certain points. So let's get straight into it. First off, I'm going to go over the main aspects of the game, like the key features and what you'll be doing for the majority of your time playing the game and my thoughts on those parts. In terms of the story from my playtime, I haven't really seen one so far, so I'm not going to cover the story like I, I would normally try to. You start and it tells you, you destroyed the world and now you have to rebuild the world. And, and then you start naked on a beach and you start punching trees. That, that's it. I think maybe a story is being worked on, but that whole part of the game is not, not implemented yet from what I've seen. So progression. Progression in this game, you craft a crafting bench, you hit trees, as with most survival games, and then you slowly work up from there. Pickaxes, axes, smelters, you craft buildings, you start making things like a blacksmith to make weapons, you make a market to make money which you can spend on traders. You make specific things like hatters, potion stations, um, cooking stations, that's quite in depth as well. There's loads of different um, progressions that you can go down, whether it be crafting, uh, weapons, cooking, smelting, um, or some, some really other stuff that we're gonna talk about later. And yeah, you, d you do the standard and the progression is very linear. You mine copper, you make a copper pickaxe, then you can mine iron and you make an iron pickaxe. And yeah, you go up through there and the tools in the game have stars. So let's say, I can't remember what it is, but let's say the iron pickaxe is a two star and then you go and try and smell, uh, mine silver. It will say, you know, you need a three star tool for this. And that's, that's how progression works in the game. Eventually you're going to hit walls where you try to craft stuff and you've made everything and you can't build anything new and you feel like you're kind of at the end of the game. And that's where this, this thing comes in called the altar of civilization. With this, you, you give the altar certain items and you can progress to the next stage of the game, like the next age. If you've played games like Satisfactory, it works very similar to this, where let's say you're in the second age, you will have to craft quite high level items from that age, give it into the altar, and then you'll progress to the next age. And that's quite unique for a crafting game, and I thought it was really cool. You go through the ages and you eventually start unlocking advanced buildings, eventually automation and machinery, and you can build stuff like hoverboards, um, motorbikes, helicopters. It really does get quite futuristic for, a, for a, you know, a crafting game where you start hitting trees with your fists. And this part of the game is a little bit dull right now, in my opinion. I made a tier five pickaxe after like an hour and, it's, and I wasn't even trying hard. And it's always just the same thing. So, you know, you'd make a tier three pickaxe. You'd go mine wherever the tier three rock is, say, I don't know, silver. And then you'd go make a silver pickaxe and then you'd go mine the next rock. And yeah, there's, there's, there's nothing really to it. However, it does lead you to the next area. The game doesn't want you mining a rock for four hours. It wants you to automate these parts of the games, which is why they, I, I don't think they've put that much work into this area. And automation is really where the game starts to shine, in my opinion. So let's just go over that. There's a lot to get into, but I want to break it down into a couple of things. You can automate a hell of a lot in this game, and it's very in-depth, it's very confusing, and it's not greatly explained. So I just want to give you an example of my experience. So, so there's this item called the rotating saws and basically you make it and it would go around harvesting items for you. It sounded pretty cool. So I wanted to make it and there's a bunch of items that you needed that I'd never seen before. So like cogs, electricity and oil. And I, I'm here with, with a pickaxe and a sword with no advanced items like that. So to make them, you had to do so much cool stuff that you don't see in most games. So one of the things you had to make was oil. So to make oil, I had to build a farm, um, had to grow wheat and then process the wheat down into wheat flour and then build this other machine that could turn the wheat flour into oil. The next item I needed was electricity. And I'm here with no futuristic items. 
So I looked and you could make a generator, which is basically a wheel, like a hamster wheel with a little box next to it. Um, and no explanation of how to generate electricity with a wheel. I tried running in it myself. There's no way of doing that. After a little Googling, I realized you can capture animals or monsters and place them in the wheel and they'll run on the wheel until they die and generate electricity all the way up until they die. So yeah, I, I started creating these basically pokeballs, these weird little cubes. You'd have to go up, you'd have to weaken enemies to lower low health and then capture them. There's a chance that the captures won't work. Um, yeah, and it's it's literally like playing a Pokemon game. It was really cool. A little bit um, buggy at times, but it's a cool idea. And then, yeah, you you bring you can go to a, an island, you can capture a high level monster, bring it home, chuck it on the wheel, and it will last longer because it's a high level monster, and it will generate electricity for you. And then, after getting all these strange items together, I created this big machine, and it would go around destroying all the trees. And then these drones would go around picking up all the wood. And you don't see that in many crafting games. And you, there's so much more you can do in automation. So you can progress further. You can create conveyor belts, automate the mining and smelting. You can grow and breed your own livestock on a farm and so much more. It's, it's, it's really surprised me how good this is. In my opinion, this is the game's strength. It's very rare to see this in a crafting game, especially a crafting game in early access with so much of this already in place. Um, I've seen it in factory games like Factorio and Satisfactory. It, it's really cool to see it in a crafting game. And it's the main thing that really has kept me, kept me playing, which kind of brings me onto the next bit. Combat and dungeons. Initial impressions of this, mm, I didn't like it. Ah. I really didn't like how combat feels in the game. It felt too easy, it felt too flexible. And I just felt it a little bit dull. I found the hitboxes were scuffed. I could never, I never felt like I was, it never felt intuitive or interactive. And I never felt like I was in control of anything I was doing. And then even with all that, it felt too easy. I played for about four hours so far, maybe five. And I've done four dungeons and I never felt like I was gonna die. I never felt like I was struggling. I always had like 50 pieces of meat on me and never needed to use them. There's some cool bosses in the dungeons that I enjoyed. Like there's a big rock monster and you have to hit its core, which does more damage. You can snipe the core with a bow and arrow to do more damage, or you can bring it to its knees so that you can attack it with your sword. Um, and a lot of the bosses do have cool interactions, but generally you do a dungeon, you'd find a strong weapon at the end of the dungeon and then you'd breeze through the next dungeon. And the monsters in the open world would, was just a joke from my experience. Maybe I got lucky with weapons I found, I don't know. Maybe it gets really hard in the late game, but yeah, five hours in, I think, and I haven't haven't broken a sweat yet in any fights. The dungeons are pretty cool, though. I'll give them that, especially the ones where you're not fighting. So you generally you progress through the dungeon through puzzles or monsters, and then you have a boss room at the end. I had this one dungeon. And it's basically a huge puzzle, and that you're at a bot you're at the bottom of the dungeon, and you have to get up to the top. And I built ladders. I built like steps all the way up. Um, and then in hindsight, I thought maybe I could have just built a, um, a fire and then caught the updrift of the wind. Um, so there's a lot of cool ways you can interact with the dungeons. And then when you get to the end, there's like a barrier covering up, I think it's like five chests. Very similar to um, very similar to Breath of the Wild. And if you're watching this video, you're going to see a lot of Breath of the Wild similarities. I won't get into that, but yeah, you'll, you'll probably spot them as you watch the video. Um, the next big thing in the game is exploration and you've got to give the game credit here you build this thing called a traveling stone it's not called a traveling stone but it's a big stone that you use to travel um, i can't remember what it's called but it lets you travel to different areas and i went to a few during my time playing the game and each one had totally different monsters um i don't know if they were procedurally generated but they were, they were all completely different from one another even that like one was like a desert one was grassland one was on fire and yeah they there's like different stuff to do, different rocks to mine, different cool monsters that not only you can fight, but you can catch. And it's cool to travel around there on like your hoverboard or maybe you have a motorcycle, you can travel around there and you've got like a glider. So you don't feel like you're trudging through these areas. It feels like you're going there and you're, you're dominating the area pretty quickly and you can go in there, get what you need, do the dungeons, find the loot, find the things you need to increase your... Uh, the things you need to donate to advance your civilization age 
yeah, and it was cool. You, you, you'd, and you'd go back and forward. It reminded me a little bit of No Man's Sky, like the going back, coming back to your base, upgrading, and then knowing what you need to get, and then going out looking for it in the different areas. Like, you know you need electricity, you go catch some high-level monsters. You know you need some certain seeds, you go get them. You need these pillars that you need to go to the next civilization. You'd find these big, um, these big pillar statues in different places. And you'd bring them all back and you'd, then you'd smelt new stuff. You'd smelt new items. You'd know you can get more or next time you can go out. And you slowly make the progress. And from the look of the travel map too, you can go to a ton of different areas and they just get more difficult the further you go. So yeah, from my time playing, these are the main things you're going to be doing. You're going to be gathering resources, crafting, building up your base, automating your base and building advanced items, vehicles, machinery, and exploring different lands, delving dungeons and finding new places. That's the broad gameplay loop that you're going to be doing for however long you play the game. So yeah, I just want to kind of go over now what I liked and disliked. So I'm going to start with the things I really like about the game. And I think I've covered on them. The automation is amazing. Being able to capture monsters, animals, use them in your base, to generate electricity or keep a farm for milk, milk, eggs and wool. All these things just are so cool and so cool to have in a crafting game. Usually they come in more like, you know, your, your MMO style games, but yeah, big fan. I spent so long just traveling around capturing monsters. Uh, some of them I didn't even use, but I just found it so cool. And I haven't even scratched the surface of, of automation yet. The ability to go through the different ages is awesome. Unlocking more advanced technology as you do it. Really enjoyed that. Some of the items you have to craft or cook or find, you have to travel to get. And this really fleshes out the game and makes it feel more like an adventure rather than like a sandbox. It feels more like you've got a task and you know what to do and you're you're creating your own adventure. Uh, the crafting, crafting is amazing. It's in-depth. The menu alone is huge and you're going to get lost in it. Just click the workbench at, you know, a few civilizations in and you're going to be scrolling to get to the end for a while. One thing here though, the game does not tell you what to do here. You progress through the age and then you go to your, your crafting table and you'll have like 50 new things to build. And you've got no idea where to start, what to do. And I really enjoy this. I like being left alone to try things out and just do what I want to do, even if it's not the most optimal thing. And it, but it's definitely confusing and I could see how some people would be bothered by that. Um, and then finally, the thing I love was the travel system. I think this is awesome. The zones are completely different, exciting. They're actually beautiful to look at as well. They really, they, you really can get immersed in these new areas. Um, and you can find secret dungeons, puzzle dungeons on them. You can find tradesmen, weird monsters. And yeah, I, I hope they fleshed it out even more. Like it, it, it's such a cool idea. But with every good thing, there are some bad parts to the game. So I do want to cover what I really didn't like about the game. I've spoke about the combat, but there's some more. So I like anime games, um, anim, anime, I'm not sure how you say it, but yeah, I really couldn't enjoy the art style here. It just feels a bit mobile gamey, a bit, just a bit unfinished. I know it is unfinished, but games like Genshin Impact, for example, the art style is very anim but it's polished to perfection. Here, it feels very rough, rough around the edges. It's like one thing that, it's a stupid thing, but it bugs me so much is when you kill something or when you loot something, the items will pop out and it'll be like a sprite on the floor. And the sprites, sometimes they just, cl they, they clip through the floor. Um, Hitboxes don't register. Some of the NPCs look straight out of like a 2005 online game. And yeah, I, I, I I, I'm not a big fan. I played despite the art style, but yeah, I can I can, I didn't like it. The inventory, oh my god, the inventory is weird as hell. Your, your items stack into groups. I don't know why they did this. Your items stack into groups of four. So, and it, it's not explained well. It doesn't make sense. So I'll give you an example. I mined some iron in the game for a while because I needed. I wanted to make loads of iron to make stuff. So and then I got an inventory was full message, and I thought, you know, I've not mined that much iron. I checked my inventory, and I had iron ore, hard iron ore, ancient iron ore, and more. And there's no explanation of what these, all these different ore types are or why I've, why they're split in different sections or why they're taking up different spots in my inventory. And yeah, it's the same, like you get leather from a bear and then you, you go get leather from something else and it's a separate inventory item. And I just can't understand why. And it just clogs up your inventory. So you're always feeling like you either, you're going out without any items on you or you're constantly trying to free up a space. And then the last big issue that I have is 
the amount of placeholders. There's so many items in the game that you'll think, oh, this looks so cool, and you go get it, and it says work in progress. Or you build something cool, and it says not implemented yet. There's a giant story screen in the game that doesn't have a use yet, it just says this is not implemented yet. Um, you build items that they don't have a use yet. But yeah, the game's in early access, so that's fine. But when you compare it to something like Valheim that's just come out, for example, that's an early access game, and you'll hit like 100 hours before you hit a point where you'll find in placeholders. This, you'll find it in the first five minutes and every other five minutes. So yeah, just prepare, be prepared that this is a work in progress and they let that show. So there is a ton that still needs doing. So you're going to run into it all the time. If you're happy to play that, that's fine. But for me, it did bother me a little bit. So overall, answering the main question, should you play Craftopia? Yes, I think so. I think you should. The game is really cool. It's unique and fun with amazing crafting and automation. The potential they could go down with these systems are insane. And I can't wait to try the game again in like a year or so. Or whenever it comes out of early access, it's, I, I've got big hopes for this game. I hope they, they really go to town and double down on this system. Um, I think they need to make the combat better, but I've seen a lot of people say they love combat. So maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just me that isn't into the style. Um, but yeah, the, the big thing I'd warn people on is the unfinished and unimplemented parts of the game that are, are right there in your face. The game's like £20 on Steam, which is, it's an indie price. But my advice would be, if, if you don't have £20 just to throw away on a, a, a chance, um, wishlist it. Wait for it to go on sale or wait for it to come out of early access and be, be finished. Um, play it when it's ready or yeah, when it's on sale. If you're like me and you've got no patience, or you just don't mind trying these games in early access and then going back to them later, go for it, go for it. But yeah, if you like crafting games, even if you like like factory games, this is not one you want to miss. Either now or when it's finished, definitely worth your time, definitely a great game, and I would highly recommend it. But that's it, guys. I'm probably going to put this game on, on the back burner for a while and then come back to it at a later date, like I say, maybe in a year or so or whenever it's finished. I'd love to hear what other people think about this. I'd love to hear what people like or dislike, or whether you've enjoyed the game. If you've enjoyed the video, drop a like, it helps me out a lot, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of these. Other than that guys, thank you so much for sticking around to the end, and I'll catch you in the next one.